When you want to invest in Ethereum and DeFi, you need to have a wallet. A wallet is a software that allows you to spend your Ether, transfer tokens, or interact with any smart contracts on Ethereum. There are many different wallets for Ethereum. Which one to choose? It really depends on your use case. In this video, I'm going to go over 5 Ethereum wallets and review them based on different criteria. UI UX, security, integrations, coin supported, and that brother feature. After you watch this video, you will know which one is best for you, no matter if you are a beginner, a trader, or a developer. And if you don't know me, I'm Julian, and on my channel Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain. I usually do technical videos, but this one is not too technical. Everybody can follow. Before I show you specific wallets, you need to first understand how a wallet works. A wallet is responsible for storing the private key of your address, sending transactions on your behalf, showing your balance of crypto assets. A wallet is a separate software from Ethereum. The Ethereum Foundation only works on the software that runs the Ethereum blockchain, that's what we call an Ethereum client, but wallets are left to third parties. When you use a wallet, the first step is to create your Ethereum address. First, the wallet will generate a random sequence of 12 words. That's what we call a mnemonic phrase. This mnemonic phrase will be used to generate a private key. This private key is like a password. The wallet will use it to sign transactions and spend crypto on your behalf. That's why this private key must be well protected and never leave the wallet. Then this private key is used to generate a public key. It's very easy to go from the private key to the public key, but the opposite is very hard. And finally, with this public key, we generate an Ethereum address. And after this process, you are ready to use your wallet. To use your wallet, you will send transaction to the Ethereum blockchain. A transaction is a signed data package with a couple of fields. The from address, so that's basically your address. The to address, that's the recipient of the transaction. The value field, that's the amount of Ether that you transfer, if there is a transfer, but that's optional. The data field, that's an optional field that is used to specify which function to call and with which argument if you send a transaction to a smart contract address. The nonce, an integer which is incremented for each transaction. This allows to order properly transactions if you send several at the same time. And your signature. This whole transaction, as well as the signature, is produced by your wallet. When the Ethereum blockchain receives this transaction, it will verify that the signature is correct. If anybody tries to impersonate your address or change anything in a transaction, the signature will not match and the transaction will be rejected. There are two ways to use a wallet. The first way, the user will use a built-in feature of the wallet, like sending some Ether or sending some ERC20 tokens. In the second way, the user will use a decentralized application like Uniswap or Compound and this dApp will request the wallet to send a transaction to Ethereum. With this system, a wallet can send any arbitrary transaction even if this kind of transaction is not a built-in feature of the wallet. To be able to do this, a wallet needs to have a dApp browser. Not all wallets have it. Okay, so that's it for the explanation on how wallets work. Next, we are going to start to review specific wallets. The most simple kind of wallet can be found in centralized exchanges. When you create an account at a centralized exchange like Coinbase or Binance, the exchange will create and manage an Ethereum wallet for you. When you buy Ether, it will be stored in the wallet, and when you sell Ether, it will be taken from that wallet. Same thing for ERC20 tokens. In terms of the UI, it depends on the exchange, but in general, it's pretty good and simple to use. You need to go through the KYC procedure of the exchange before you can use the wallet, so this is a bit less convenient than other wallets outside of centralized exchanges. Okay, so now let's review the security. The private key of your wallet, as well as other user wallets, are stored on the servers of the exchange. So this is a huge honeypot for hackers. In the past, there have been many examples of centralized exchanges that were hacked and user funds lost, like the infamous case of Mongox in 2014. So that's why exchange wallets don't rank really high in terms of security. In terms of integration, exchange wallets don't offer much. However, recently we started to see some DeFi integrations. For example, on Coinbase, now you can stake your DAI in order to earn the DSR rate of the MakerDAO protocol. 
On Binance, they offer some DeFi staking for even more coins. In the future, on some exchanges, we will probably also be able to stake Ether to be a validator on Ethereum 2.0. For ERC20 tokens, wallets of centralized exchanges do offer for some ERC20 tokens in general, but the choice is not very large and it's not possible to add some custom tokens. When it comes to ERC721 tokens, there is no support at all. Centralized exchanges don't offer access to DAP browsers, unfortunately, so you will not be able to access decentralized application and DeFi apps with the wallet of your exchange. So in conclusion, I would recommend wallets of centralized exchanges to beginner and also to traders. But because of the security risk and also of the lack of control of your private key, make sure you never leave too much on centralized exchanges. And as the saying goes, not your keys, not your crypto. Next, I'm going to introduce Trust Wallet. Trust Wallet is a mobile wallet available on iOS and Android. It is used by 5 million users and was acquired by Binance in 2018. In terms of user experience, Trust Wallet is very nice and simple to use. For security, Trust Wallet stores your private key on your device and encrypts it with your password. In general, it's harder for hackers to hack into a mobile device because mobile operating systems are not as open as desktop operating systems. And even if a hacker somehow managed to access your device, it could not decrypt the private key without your password. Trust Wallet has two exchange integration, an integration with the Binance DEX, which is on the Binance Smart Chain, an EVM compatible blockchain. And for what concerns us more directly, Ethereum, there is another integration with Uniswap, which gives you access to a huge number of markets for ERC20 tokens. Trust Wallet supports out of the box a lot of ERC20 tokens, and it's also possible to add your own custom tokens. It also supports any ERC721 or even ERC1155 tokens, which is very convenient if you are a gamer or an investor in crypto collectible. It also has a DAP browser that allows you to interact with any DAP. Note that the DAP browser on iOS had to be removed because of a decision of Apple. On Android, you still have access to it. In any case, no matter if you are on Android or iOS, there is an alternative way to use dApps with Trust Wallet by using the Wallet Connect protocol. With Wallet Connect, you scan a QR code given by a dApp on your desktop, and with this, Trust Wallet knows which transaction to send to the dApp. It's not as good as a dApp browser because it requires the dApp to explicitly support Wallet Connect and the user experience is a bit more clunky. Next, I'm going to introduce Arjun. Arjun is a mobile wallet available on Android and iOS. It's very Ethereum-centric with many DeFi integrations. Arjun has some of the best user experience among all wallets. Arjun has a unique architecture with a smart contract deployed for each wallet. That's what we call a smart contract wallet. I explain smart contract wallets in more details in another video on my channel, but very briefly, these architectures offer some unique advantages when it comes to security, such as enforcing a daily limit for the withdrawal of crypto, establishing a whitelist of DAP allowed to interact with your wallet, and a social recovery mechanism to help you recover control of your wallet with people you trust if you ever lose your password. There is still a private key that is used to control this wallet smart contract and this private key is stored encrypted on your device. Arjun has an integration with 10 decentralized exchanges, including Uniswap and Kyber, to offer you the best prices on many ERC20 tokens. Compared to the exchange integration of other wallets, there are many more tokens available for Argent. Argent also offers an integration with many DeFi protocols like Compound, Aave, Yearn, Balancer. From your wallet, you can invest in these protocols very easily. The support for ERC20 tokens is excellent on Argent. It supports all of them. Same thing for ERC721 tokens. Argent doesn't have a DAP browser. However, like for Trust Wallet, you can use the Wallet Connect feature to use any DAP that supports the Wallet Connect protocol. To conclude with Argent, I would say that it's a great wallet if you want to try out a few DeFi protocols in a simple way. 
Next, I'm going to introduce MetaMask. MetaMask is one of the most popular Ethereum wallet. They passed 1 million users in October 2020 and they keep growing. It's available as a browser extension in Chrome, Firefox, Brave and Edge, as well as a mobile app on Android and iOS. One nice feature is the ability to synchronize your private keys between the browser extension and the mobile app. The user experience on MetaMask is not that great. The UI is pretty confusing and newbies often struggle with it. Still, they are making progress and it's already way better than a few years ago. MetaMask stores private keys on your device encrypted with your password. If you use the Chrome extension of MetaMask, the private key is stored in the data store of your browser. And if you use a mobile app, the private key is stored on your mobile. MetaMask offers an integration with Uniswap and other decentralized exchanges, which allow you to trade YAS20 tokens directly from your wallet. Currently, this integration is only available in the Chrome extension, but soon they will roll it out on mobile as well. MetaMask support YAS20 tokens. By default, there is none configured, but you can add any YAS20 token. MetaMask also supports YAS721 tokens. MetaMask does, of course, has a DAB browser. That's its main feature, actually. Another interesting feature is the ability to connect to different Ethereum network beside mainnet. MetaMask can connect to any public testnet like Kovan or Robston, as well as local development blockchain like Ganache. And more generally, it can connect to any EVM compatible network, such as the Binance Smart Chain. That's very unique and to my knowledge, there is no other Ethereum wallet capable of doing this. For this reason, if you are a developer, you absolutely need to have MetaMask in your toolbox. And even as an end user, you should probably also use MetaMask because that's the most standard Ethereum wallet. Most dApps make sure that they work with MetaMask first before adding integration with other wallets. Next, I'm going to show you the Nano Ledger S. The Nano Ledger is a physical device. Unlike the other wallets I showed you before, this one is not free. You have to buy it. It currently costs $75. So why would you bother to pay this? Let's see this in detail. So the user experience on the Nano Ledger is notoriously bad. In order to interact with your Nano, you need to use its two small buttons and its tiny little screen. You also have to connect it to your computer with a USB cable and you also need to use another software on your computer Ledger Live. The connection between your Nano Ledger and your computer can be quite flaky. If it's interrupted, you need to restart your Nano, unlock it and connect it again to your laptop, which can be quite frustrating. In terms of security, the Nano Ledger ranks the highest among all the wallets I mentioned before. It's because the private key never leaves the device of the Nano. Even if your laptop is infected with some viruses, they will never be able to steal the private key of your Nano. In terms of integrations with the Ledger Live software, you have an integration with an exchange which allow you to buy and sell various crypto assets, including some YAS20 tokens, but the selection is a little bit limited. There are 1,250 YAS20 tokens supported on the Nano Ledger via the Ledger Live software. It's not possible to add extra YAS20 tokens on the Ledger Live app, but it's possible to connect your Nano Ledger to MetaMask and with MetaMask, you can add any ERC20 tokens. For ERC721, there is no native support, but with a connection to MetaMask, you can manage your ERC721 tokens. There is no DAP browser in the Nano Ledger, but once again, the connection to MetaMask will save us as MetaMask itself has a DAP browser. There are still many other Ethereum wallets that I haven't talked about, but with the one I mentioned, it should cover most of your needs. So what to do next? In this video, I introduce wallets by order of difficulty from beginner to advanced. If you are a beginner, start from the beginning by using the wallet of a centralized exchange, then walk your way up and use the other wallets until you know how to use a hardware wallet like the Nano Ledger. To practice with these wallets, send coins back and forth, use the built-in features like decentralized exchanges, integration with DeFi protocols, etc. And after you experiment with all of these wallets, you don't need to settle on just one of them. You can keep using several. For example, you can leverage the high security of the Nano Ledger to store a large amount of crypto and you can use the other wallets in order to invest in DeFi or do some trading more easily. 
Also, it's important to understand that you can manage the same Ethereum address with several wallets by reusing the same private key. For example, if you receive some token that you can manage with one wallet, it's not stuck there. You can just use another wallet that knows how to deal with this token. When I introduced the Argent wallet, I mentioned that it was a special kind of wallet called a smart contract wallet. Smart contract wallets are absolutely cutting edge technology that are revolutionizing the way wallets work. And if you want to know more about the smart contract wallets, check out this video. And if you are a developer, you absolutely have to know how to work with MetaMask. And for this, you can watch these two other videos. I'll see you there.